Good morning, everyone. It's Angie Coley, and today I wanted to talk to you about your oh hell no number. So I think a lot of people, when they first start freelancing, they they kind of shoot themselves in the foot without meaning to because they look around. There's a lot of great resources out there that tell you about what prices you should set, how much things should cost, and and I understand setting yourself up to be what feels like competitive, but know that when people are setting prices, they're doing the same research as you. So it can be kind of a self-fulfilling prophecy where everybody is looking for inspiration and looking at everybody else around them and seeing what they're doing. Um, and why this can be such a, you know, get you off on the wrong foot, shoot yourself in the foot thing is you may be naming when, when you are talking to a client and you have accepted a, a project and you are putting together a quote, you may have named what feels like an incredibly large number. It could even be like double your hourly rate that it would be at the day job, but it could still be not enough to support you and your business. And here's what I want to point out. Your oh hell no number is the number at which you know you need to walk away because this project is not profitable to you. And if you're not in business to make a profit, then you don't really have a business. You're kind of hiring yourself to be an employee. Um, And the whole point of creating a business is that you have taken this massive risk, right? You have, as an employee, you are, are passing kind of the responsibility for getting new business uh, and marketing and all of those other things onto your employer who brings you work to do and pays you to do that work. So as a business owner, you are going out and finding that work, bringing it in. You're going in and meeting with these clients and servicing them and making sure that they're happy. You're in client management too, and you're actually doing the work. And it's it's a little bit of extra work. So not only should your rates be raised to reflect that because you can't actually charge your clients for the time that you spend prospecting or the time that you spend balancing your books. Um, Lost my train of thought there. But uh, you can't charge your clients for that, but you're also not going to be working 40 hours a week like you would at a day job. Let me reiterate that because I think a lot of people when they're freelancing think that they're going to bill 40 hours a week and they start their mental calculations from that perspective. If you're going to bill 40 hours a week, you're probably going to be working 60 to 80 hours a week because you're going to need to put in work before that to find people to do business with prospecting and prospecting again is something that you can't charge your clients for. Um, They wouldn't really be appreciative of the fact that you put your business growth activities on their dime. So, Back to this oh hell no number, like you might be naming a number for your quote that feels super big and super challenging and it still could be losing you money. And here's what I mean. So if you've ever done a budget, then something like this probably looks very familiar to you. I'm going to hold that up there. All right. And this is actually the baseline that you want to use when you're trying to figure out how you need to charge. I don't want you to look at the the pricing comparison guides. Like I know in uh, writing, there's Writer's Market, which is a really big book that you can get at the library. It has like a very comprehensive, every kind of writing project you can imagine. Uh, Quotes per page, per word, all kinds of rates. But where you really need to start is with this guy. Because it's not just about making sure that you're paying your housing costs and what it takes to survive, right? Think about if you have a vehicle, if you have gas and insurance and health insurance that you have to maintain, uh, and homeowner's insurance or renter's insurance is mandatory in most places in the States. If you've got any pets, that's going to add money that you need to, to account for. Entertainment and fun. I think this is one of the most neglected parts of people setting their rates because they think, I'll I'll just scrimp and save. The whole point, again, of starting a business is to make you the money that gives you the freedom to do 
what you want to do to, to run your life the way you want to run it. Uh, and so in any budget, any competent financial advisor will advise you to make sure that you are accounting as long as you are not in dire financial straits. Account for fun. You're going to want to have fun. You're not going to want to sit your ass, like, and trust it. Take it from a workaholic. I am a workaholic. Work sometimes defines my life, and I have to fight really hard against that instinct because I love the work I do, so I want to do it all the time. I like going to $5 movie Tuesdays and buying myself a big old bucket of popcorn. Um, every once in a while, if I'm feeling stuck at home, I like taking myself out to lunch on, like, a patio somewhere and just having someone bring me food while I sit and think about things. So account for fun money. It's really, really important for your mental health. Um, and then another thing that people don't really think about, savings, retirement. Note this guy down here at the bottom, the FU fund. You're gonna hear me preaching about that for a long time if you stick with me. Um, the FU fund is the funds that gives you the freedom to walk away from any client in the events that it has become too burdensome, they're taking up too much of your time, they become abusive, that, that happens. People are people, they have things that are going on in their own lives, it doesn't always necessarily mean that you suck, it's a lot of the times it's just stuff that's going on with them. But if you are not approaching business thinking about what you need to make, this oh hell no number, and putting enough in savings that allows you to walk away from any project that is bringing you down and is stifling your business and your creativity, then you're setting yourself up to fail. And know that this is a process over time, right? Unless you are building up a savings for many years to, you know, ultimately leave with like six months of savings, that's a little bit of a different scenario. And that, that gives you a little bit more runway. But for some people like myself, I found myself laid off and having to figure out this writing thing as I went along. Uh, savings, FU funds, none of these things were anywhere near my periphery. It was just making enough to eat, making enough to pay rent. And that's okay. Just remember that once your basic needs are taken care of, it's time to shift up to the very next step, which is getting security, stability, and then from that, leveraging that into freedom and more income. So this is going to be a step-by-step. -step. If you are not at this step, don't freak out yet. So your oh hell no number is a monthly number that is based on what you need to make, what you want to make. Don't be afraid to set ambitious targets. If you want to put $500 in retirement a month, put that in your oh hell no number. Uh, and make sure that you're accounting for that because unless you think about it, you're going to forget about it when you're setting these quotes. So when you add all of those numbers up that I showed you in that little list, you're going to get a monthly number. It might be 3,000, it might be 10,000, but the easiest way that I've found to set a price is once you know what that number is, divide it by the number of days you plan to work per month. So a lot of people, especially in the States, work Monday through Friday every week. So that's roughly 20 working days per month. So say just for nice round numbers that uh, your, your monthly expense was $5,000. I'm gonna bust out the calculator because I don't wanna do bad math. $5,000 divided by 20 is $250 and that is your day rate. So don't share your day rate with people until you are positioned effectively to be bought by the day, so to speak. But when you are calculating how much time it's going to take you to do these projects, now you can break it down into days. And I highly advise day rates as a behind the scenes calculation because it takes the pressure off having to figure out a number of hours, justify a number of hours. Like when you're trading time for hours, you're back in an employee state. And owning a business is about time leverage and finding a way to separate your earning potential from the hours that you work. Otherwise, if money is always tied to hours to make more money, you're going to have to work more hours and around and around we go on the hamster wheel. So. This day rate not only gives you some freedom from having to account for all your hours, it 
gives you some nice round numbers to work with. You know, if I think that it's going to take me two two days to write a, a sales page, then five hundred dollars is my rate. Nice, easy. It doesn't require me to sit at the computer for eight hours a day to justify that two hundred and fifty dollars per day. Do you get what I say? What I'm saying here? Um, it doesn't require my ass to be in a chair for all of those hours. And for me as a writer, that's really critical because I do a lot of my thinking up walking around, puttering in my garden. Uh, I can't tell you how many times my boyfriend has seen me just sitting on the couch with uh, an expression, probably a lot like this. And if I happen to be looking at him, he thinks I'm staring at him. It's very awkward. But usually that's when I'm just turning things over in my mind. I'm off in another land trying to figure out a problem in my head. And I need that time without having, you know, some automated timer on my screen trying to figure out if I'm delivering value. Yes, I'm delivering value. I don't have to be in my chair eight hours a day to be delivering value. Um, and, and that's another thing that I want to talk about in terms of pricing, because when you're first starting out and if you've been an employee for a while and now you're jumping over into freelance, it's going to be really hard to get rid of that per hour mentality. But think in terms of the value that you deliver versus the task that you're being asked to do. Okay. So I once was asked to write a series of three emails to send to people and, and I'm a copywriter. So the caveat that I tell the story is that I, I make sales. So it's a little bit easier to measure the value literally in, in dollars that I bring to pe to people's businesses because that's what my job is to add money. It may be a little bit different if you're a graphic designer, if you're a photographer, but again, think in terms of the value that you are delivering. If you're a photographer, you are delivering this asset that can be reused, repurposed over and over and over again. That deserves to be paid. Um, if you're a graphic designer, same thing. You're creating an asset that can be used, can be leveraged, can be uh, repurposed over and over again. Presumably they're not coming back to you to redesign the same thing every freaking week. So, um, Think in terms of the value that you deliver instead of the tasks and how much time it's going to take you. So back to the emails. They wanted to send these emails to get people re-engaged. Uh, and this was a list of email subscribers. It was a retail store, really big list. And there's probably, you know, millions of people on this list. I can't remember. It's been a while. But these people that they wanted me to speak to with these emails hadn't opened an email in 180 days. So I just operated from the assumption of they're busy. They haven't had a reason to look. I'm going to make these emails super quick. I'm going to try and get them to come back to the store. I'm going to give them a compelling offer and I'm just going to keep it really short. So three emails, all very super short, still took me about the same amount of time to think through how to position everything in my mind as it would a very long email. But, um, so if I were charging per word or per hour, then people would have a hard time seeing the value. But the surprise result is that those three emails recovered $8.4 million in sales. And again, it's a retail chain with millions of email subscribers. So I'm going to give that caveat as well as I'm a copywriter. But do you see how I would be shooting myself in the foot if I were looking at the work that I produced as a certain number of words, a certain set of emails, um, a number of hours that I sat in my chair and typed away? The value that I delivered to that company for those three little insignificant seeming emails was $8.4 million. Like, that's a lot of money. Um, so... I know that's a lot. I just threw a lot of numbers and math at you, but really wanted to get you thinking. If you're gearing up to start freelancing, if you've already started freelancing, this is a great lens to start looking at your finances through. And, and the great thing is that if you come to somebody, going back to our earlier day rate math, and you say, okay, you know, my fee for doing this sales page for you is $500 and they go, Oh, we were thinking 300. You go, Hey, it sounds like it's not going to be a good fit. I can't do it for that number. And remind yourself, like if you need to put on a hat and be your assistant and your defender, when you're talking to these clients, 
don't accept $300 for a job that you know is worth $500. Now, again, this kind of goes back to the caveat that I mentioned earlier with knowing where you fit in the market. Obviously, for those emails, if I am, if I don't have a track record, the, the, email, the three email sequence that I made, I'm not going to charge them $10,000 for those three emails. But I might charge them a, a day rate to get the emails done in a percentage of sales, just to show them the kind of number that I can drive. So you don't want to be outrageously high. You don't want to be outrageously low when compared to the market. But start in your pricing research with knowing what you need to make, then go look at what the market is doing and figure out where you fit within the market. Because trust me, being priced way too high and being priced way too low are both flags on the consumer end, on the client end, especially if they've been working with freelancers for a while. So that's what I have for you today. Lots to think about. Uh, if you have any questions or you want to clarify, you want to run some numbers by me, leave it in the comment below and let's go kick some ass.